And welcome back. Here's a live look in at what's going on in Charlotte right now at the Democratic National Convention. Now for more reaction from on the ground at the DNC, I'm joined by Iowa Senator Tom Harkin. Senator Tar Harkin, welcome to the program. Hey, it's great to be with you. I hope you can hear me all right. It's kind of noisy out here. Yeah, no, it sounds you sound great. Uh, your thoughts on, on how the DNC is going so far? I think it's great. I think it's very uplifting. Uh, I, I think the, the difference between this convention and uh, watching the Republicans on last week, uh, it, it, it really does tell the difference just visually on how we view America. I mean, you look out at this convention floor, Half of, the, half of our delegates are women. We are a mixture of African Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans, Eastern European Americans, Americans whose ancestors came over on the Mayflower. I mean, we really look like America. And you look at that Republican convention, well, I think I counted four or five African Americans about, and uh, mostly white males. Yeah. And that's why I say you just look at it and you see the difference in our approach to America. Well, and, and Iowa is a, a fairly white state and, 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 you know, kind of a bellwether state in many regards. You're, you're the senator from Iowa. I'm, I'm curious, you know, the, the, the conventional wisdom is that Mitt Romney has to win 61 percent of the white vote in order to win the presidency. Um, and you were just talking about the diversity you're seeing at the DNC. Um, can President Obama pull 40, 41 percent of the white vote? Absolutely. Uh, uh, both men and women, by the way. Yes. Uh, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind he will, because I, you know, it's the middle class that's going to decide this election. And I think when middle class independent voters uh, who haven't kind of made up their minds yet, and they're kind of, you know, a lot of these middle class, they've lost a lot of wealth in the last 30 years. Uh, the middle class has just been under siege literally for 30 years, mm -hmm. although it's been the worst in the last 10 years. I think that they're, you know, obviously they're upset. I understand that. But I think they're going to look at these two candidates and ask a very fundamental question when they go in to vote. Which one of those two? Do I really trust in the next four years? Forget about the past. The past is the past. But which one of those two can I trust in the next four years to fight for me? Who really understands my life? And I think what you've seen here at the convention, what you've heard from Michelle Obama, what you're going to hear from Barack Obama tomorrow night and Joe Biden, they get it. This is where they come from. Uh, they weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouths. They had to work hard for everything they got. They understand the middle class. And I think that's what's going to carry them through. How do you think it's possible that the Republicans can pull off getting middle class people to vote for them when their primary agenda seems to be tax cuts for the rich and let's lay off some more public workers? Well, what the Republicans' tactic has been for some time now is to both, I think, quite frankly, uh, can I use the word lie? <laughs> lie about what the economic situ situation is like and what their goals are. I mean, I watched uh, Ryan, uh, Paul Ryan, last week on television when he was speaking, and I thought any minute his pants were going to catch on fire, yeah. <laughs> you know. I, it's just one mis falsehood after another. The second thing the Republicans have been very good at is playing upon the fears of people and trying to make people afraid and, and to inject this fear of the future. And that to me is, is really, a, again, I think disruptive. I think it's, it's sort of demeaning of our American character. But that's why they get middle class voters to vote for them. They, they distort the economics of what they're about, and then they play upon the fear of people. And rather than playing upon fear, Barack Obama and we Democrats, our progressives, we appeal to the hope of people, to their better nature, to say that we're all together in this, that we, we can make a better life for ourselves in this country, and government is a big part of that.
The Republicans say we can only have a better life if it's every person for himself. Very, very well said. Senator Tom Harkin, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Tom. See you.